Hi, I'm Ashley and this is Garden Buzz. Today we're going to do some garden maintenance by our back patio. We've got some weeding to do, pruning, shearing some things back, and then we're going to add some wood chips so that we get less weeds and have to weed less often. And then we'll take a look at it after and we'll talk about the plants and my future vision for this garden. Um, let me go over some of the products I'm going to use. I'm going to use this plant tone by Espoma. This is a slow release fertilizer so it will last for about a month and then we're going to give them some instant food. It's a Fertiloom all-purpose water soluble plant food so we'll give them some of that and then I'm also going to fertilize my peach trees while I'm back there with this Fertiloom fruit citrus and pecan tree food and then I've got my pruners and let's get started. All right, I just got done doing all the weeding. This part right behind me, it was heavy full of weeds. I don't know if it's been weeded for at least two months. I weeded most everything end of June. And then when I came back, I've just been busy with the vegetable garden and other things around the house. So that part over there, right over there, at the very end by the rocks, that did not get done for at least two months but it looks great now and the flowers can breathe. So I'm really happy with it. So next I'm gonna do some pruning. So the first thing you wanna do is clean your pruners. If you do not clean your pruners, your plants could get diseases if it's left on your blades. So I clean it with bleach. I do one part bleach, nine parts water and let them soak in hot water for about 30 minutes and then scrub them off and they should be ready to go. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to start with our Shasta Daisy. So here's my Shasta Daisy and it's looked like this for a couple of weeks now. So I'm excited to get out here and prune off the dead daisy. What you do is you're going to take your pruners and if I would have done this earlier I probably would have just cut it right off. But now that there are new blooms on here, I don't want to cut any of the new blooms. For instance, this one right here, I'm going to go down until I see the next new bloom. So if you can look right in there, you can see a bloom right there. So I'm going to cut this spent bloom off about right there. That way this new bloom will be able to get enough energy to put on a good show, just like this one, this cute little one over here.
So here's this Shasta Daisy after I have pulled all the spent blooms off. You can see all the new growth and blooms. Before you know it, it will be gorgeous again. I did see a lot of ladybug skin. They shed their skin when they're growing and it's all over my plant. They definitely frequent this plant. They really like it. So, all right, I'm gonna do my other daisy, but before I do, let's look at a few of my other plants. So this geranium right here, all I have to do is pull off the spent blooms, just like that. And then I've got a salvia that has some that I need to cut back. And these two salvias still look pretty good. I don't see any that need to be cut back yet. I've got a couple of my lilies over here that I'll cut off. On my delphinium, I'm going to cut it back almost to the ground. Uh, all of these spent blooms, right now they're working on forming seeds, so that's what they're putting all their energy into. And I want it to bloom at least one more time before summer is over. So I'm going to cut it back down to the ground. It's already producing some new growth. So you can see that the new growth is yellow and it's got some green veins in it. That is chlorosis, so I'm going to give it some chelated iron and hopefully it will help that. And then I got some nepeta here that needs to be sheared back. And then also some dianthus. So it's got some really, really sweet, pretty blooms on it, but a lot of them are already spent. So I'm going to take those spent ones and cut them off. So we have all the weeding done and deadheading, pruning, everything is looking great. Now it's time to fertilize and then we're going to put the wood chips in and we'll take a tour.
the next morning and I've got all of the weeding, pruning, fertilizing, and mulching done. And wow, that mulch makes a big difference. You can see all the beautiful plants in that black mulch. It just makes them pop. So let's take a tour and see what is in this garden bed. So over here in the corner, we have a miniature Russian sage. It's a dwarf Russian sage. It shouldn't get much bigger than this. And it is called Little Lace. Over here by the rocks, we have two different kinds of salvia. Uh, this white one is a Victoria salvia. I'm not actually sure what this purple one is, this bluish purple one is. I grew it from seed and I've thrown away the seed packet, but I love the flowers on them and I feel like they last longer than some salvias. I don't have to prune them back as soon. And then down here is another small salvia. I pruned that one back, shared it all back just yesterday. And we have a couple day lilies. Let's see if we can get to this day lily without stepping on any flowers. I don't have any new blooms. They're all spent. Looks like they're almost all dying, but it's kind of like a purplish color. Looks really pretty. And then along the border here, I've got different kinds of coleus. I grew these from seed. I'm not quite sure that was the best idea. I feel like Coleus likes the shade a little bit and midday these all start drooping. Plus I thought next year maybe it would be a good idea. I don't know. You let me know what you think. If I made like a foot to a foot and a half border along the edge of the rocks here and then planted like a potato vine, sweet potato vine and some petunias and then they would just spill over the rocks. I think that would look really pretty. Right here, we have a Shasta Daisy that I grew from seed. And when it is in full bloom, it is so beautiful. So here's a picture of one of the blooms that have come out lately. But this guy started wilting on the bottom of the plant. Like all the leaves were turning brown and dying. And I read that sometimes if they get too much water, that happens. So some of these plants over here get some overhead water. So I pulled the drip that goes to it. So it's just getting overhead water and it's starting to grow some green leaves back on the bottom. I don't know if you can see in there. <clears throat> and then I've got a sedum right here. It's a creeping sedum. It's very pretty. I really like it. And a couple of flocks. These flocks I grew from seed. It was just a mixed packet of seeds. They're very beautiful. And this little white flower here is a Picabella petunia. All right, let's move on this way. This space needs a little work. We've got some empty spots to fill in. So my goal is to have more of a cottage garden so there's no formality to this bed. But as you've noticed, I planted these and then when they grew bigger, they are a little too close to each other. So I was waiting to see what room I actually had in this area before I planted anything else. All right, let's take a look at this little beauty here. This is a dianthus or a carnation. It just gets these sweet little blooms on them. I love them. Um, it's a Proven Winners variety Fruit Punch Classic Coral. And then right there is another one. This is Spiked Punch. It doesn't have any blooms on it right now. It's like a darker, mauve pink color. It's very pretty. Oh, I forgot to show you. I also have, my plan was to put a, a trellis up this pole right here. So I've got a President's Clematis right here. 
but it doesn't seem to be doing very well. The leaves are turning brown. Uh, it's just not very happy right here. So I think I might transplant it up front with the other two I have that seem to do really well up front by our porch. All right, so this is a delphinium. I don't know what kind of delphinium it is. I did cut it all back and I gave it some chelated iron to try to get rid of the chlorosis. It was something I grew from seed. It came in a mixed package. We've got a nepeta right here. This nepeta is called Kitten Around. I cut off most of the spent blooms, but I left a couple that were still going. It just stays really small. It doesn't, it's not a very big nepeta. And there's another phlox. And then over here we have a yellow day lily. And all the blooms are spent on it, so I cut them off. And a couple more phlox. <laughs> this one is just not wanting to grow. It's just teeny tiny. And then right here I've got a dwarf butterfly bush. This is gorgeous. It's another proven winner's brand. It's called Pugster White. But wow, do the bees love this. It just gets the most gorgeous blooms. And then I've got another daylily right here. It's like a soft yellow and it has a peach color inside. It's very beautiful. And right here is a Veronica. I cut most of the blooms back, but there's a few of them still on there. I think it's called Vernique Rose. And there's my other Shasta Daisy that I pruned. Oh, it's got one little bloom on it. I love daisies. They have the most beautiful blooms. And my cone flower I grew from seed, it is just taking off. I'd say it's about three, three and a half feet tall. If you've never grown a cone flower, I suggest you do. They, it's so funny. When you fill them, this part of the plant feels like plastic to me. But they are just gorgeous. And then I've got a couple lavender that line the stepping stones to get from the patio to the grass. I'm not quite sure what the lavender is, but this one was planted last year and it's getting little blooms on it. And then I've got another one over here, right there. That was new this year and it just came in the littlest container. And even though it looks tiny still, it has grown a lot. Here's a pretty white phlox that's actually growing. I love phlox. I love the flowers on them. Right here is another kind of Veronica. It's called Royal Candles and it gets purple spikes on it. It's really interesting looking when it's blooming. And another one of my Delphiniums that I have grown from seed. And a Picabella Petunia. And then these Geraniums here, they have a pretty coral color. And I actually got them from our local high school. Um, their club that does all the planting and works in the greenhouse was selling some of their plants, so I bought some from them. And we've got a couple marigolds in here. I love marigolds. And another sedum. And some Russian sage. And then back here in this corner behind our rain barrel is a wisteria. So I was reading about wisteria because I was wondering why it wasn't blooming, but I guess wisteria doesn't bloom for uh, five to seven years after you plant it. So hopefully someday we'll see some beautiful blooms on there. I've got a couple hanging baskets also. This one I grew from seed. It's the beachcomber mix from Park Seed. Turned out really well. It's looking beautiful. And here's another one of my hanging baskets I planted. I put some super bells in it, but they are not doing very well for me this year. I've had four, five baskets with super bells, and this is the only one living this year, and it looks chlorotic and does not bloom very well. 
So I don't know. I'm just not having very much luck with super bells. Let's go over and take a look at my rose garden. So over here is my rose garden and there's a few other plants also. I've got these beautiful little purple flowers. They're petunias. I grew them from seed. I think they're called denim shades and they're from park seed. But they just have a bunch of different shades of purple on them. They're very, very beautiful. And they have more of a mounding habit. And then also we've got some hibiscus plants. This is a proven winner's brand and it's called Spinderella. Let's take a close up look at this. Gorgeous. I love hibiscus flowers. These actually have a story behind them. So in our other house, my daughter's room was Hawaiian and we had hibiscus flowers um, painted all over her room. And I just thought she'd like to have them to look out her window when she gets up in the morning. So we planted a couple bushes right outside her window there. Okay, let's go take a look at the roses. So these roses are at last roses. And when they came to me, they were in the tiniest, tiniest containers. So even though they are still small, they've probably grown three to four times larger than what they were. But I just love the peach blooms that they get. Very gorgeous. And even when they are spent and all the petals are about to fall off, they turn a little lighter and they are still beautiful. Look at all the buds on this one right here. So there's about, let's see, eight at last roses here and between most of them some of it died are some white alyssum but they're looking very gorgeous that one right there is not doing as well i'm not sure why it gets the same amount of water as the rest of them and then over here in the corner we have a rogue dahlia i don't even remember what the name of it is but it gets like a light purple almost like a violet color bloom i'd actually planted dahlias along this whole back wall and this is the only one that came up last year and i didn't think it'd come up again this year but it did so we kept it here we'll probably transplant it into our cut flower garden next year and then over here at the end, we've got some Dusty Miller and so some more Picabello uh, Petunias. They aren't doing the best though. And in the corner there's some more Coleus. So that ends our tour. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, happy gardening.